In this challenge, I've asked you to take a skewed variable and transform it so that it no longer has outliers by pulling them into the center of the distribution. We're going to start by loading an external data set called xskew.csv. I've put that into the R folder that I keep on my desktop, and I'm going to load it into an object called xskew. There it is. If I click on that, you'll see, by the way, it's loaded it as two variables, even though it shouldn't have that. It gave a capital X to the name of the row names. Now I don't need that one. And so what I'm actually going to do is create another object called X, and I'm going to keep just the second column. So the square brackets tell it what I want to keep. The first number is for rows. By leaving that blank and putting a comma, I'm saying keep all rows, and two means keep just the second column. And now I've got a new object, X, that has just those variables. I'm going to make a histogram of X. And you can see what it has is a very strong negative skew. Now, most of the examples that we've had had positive skews where we would do something like a logarithmic transformation to bring them in. But when you have a negative skew, the project is a little different. One way of dealing with this is to square the numbers. And what that does is it pushes the top ones out a little bit, and hopefully you'll get to something that resembles a bell curve more strongly. I'm going to create a new variable called x2 for x squared by simply squaring the number. I use x and then the caret sign, which is over the 6 on your keyboard, and 2. That squares every value in it. So now I have another variable called x2. Let's get a histogram of x2 and see how it's doing. It's less skewed, but it is still there. In fact, if I run a box plot, then we can see how many outliers we have. So I'm going to run a box plot of my new variable x2 for x squared. And look, I still have a number of outliers on the low end, so it didn't completely fix the problem. So I'm going to try another solution, by the way, and that is really to just do it again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to square the squares, or just go back to the original and raise those values to the fourth power. You can just kind of play around until you get to something that seems to be working. So I'm going to create a new variable now, x4. shows up in my workspace on the right. I'll create a histogram of that. And you see right now it's a lot more symmetrical and it's a lot closer to a bell curve than what we had originally. I'll do a box plot now, and it's almost perfectly symmetrical with no outliers on either end. So what I've done here is I have not lost any of the data. What I've done is I've simply pulled in the lower values, really by extending the upper values. And that changed the distribution as a whole to be something a lot closer to a bell curve, which means I can now use this variable for standard least squares based analyses without losing any data in the process.